Hello and welcome to today's European SharePoint Office 365 and Azure Community Webinar. My name is Shane and I'm delighted to be joined by Albert Jan Schkoot, MVP at Mavathon Netherlands, Stefan Bissler and Thomas Goles from MVP. He's an MVP as well uh, from Salvion Information Management GmbH Austria, who will be talking to you today about Office 365 and AI, the fundamentals. Remember to join in the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at European SP and our hashtag is ESPC19. Don't forget to check out the Resource Center. This is updated daily with the latest blogs, ebooks, webinars, and how to videos. Simply visit SharePointEurope.com and click the content link at the top. ESPC 19 team discounts allow you to book four tickets and receive your fifth ticket free. That's a huge 20% discount worth up to €1,795. For a huge amount of team learning and development, join the best SharePoint Office 365 and Azure practitioners in the world in Prague this December and go to the next level faster together. Simply visit SharePointEurope.com for further details. After the webinar, we will have a questions and answers session. Type any questions you have in the questions window. Questions will be selected and answered at the end of the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and added to the resource center where you'll be notified by email when it is available. And now I'm going to pass you over to our first presenter, Thomas Goles. Hello, Thomas. And hopefully you can hear me, Thomas. You're muted at the moment. Oh, great. Hello, Shane. All good to hey, you. Hey, Thomas. So take it away. Yep. Just making sure that you can see my screen. I sure can. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, let's make a short introduction who we are. Api, do you want to start, please? Yeah, sure. Hi, my name is Albert Jan. Uh, most people call me Epi. I'm from the Netherlands and together with Thomas and Stefan, we are going to talk you through some of the AI fundamentals that uh, we're going to do a workshop of. So please keep in mind, it's a full day workshop and today we only have got an hour. So hopefully we can get you guys uh, hyped up a bit about the topic. So Thomas. Yes. Stefan, you're next. Ooh, Good. Sorry. My name is Stefan. I'm from, from Graz, uh, Austria. Um, I'm happy to present the full day tutorial uh, at ESPC this year about my favorite thing called AI and all of, uh, bots and, and cognitive services. So I hope to see many of you uh, there in Prague in a couple of weeks. All right. And my name is Thomas Gelles. I'm also working for Solvian. So right now, if I look over my screen, I can see Stefan in the end of the room. Uh, I'm a team lead here for yeah working for SharePoint mainly and now it is Office 65 and I will kick it off with the next couple of slides um, and we start with a little yeah brain gymnastic uh, environment please just take two or three seconds and think of what artificial intelligence means to you all right uh, most of the people probably think of something like this so maybe the Terminator uh, we are based right now in Graz, so Arnold Schwarzenegger is from our hometown. That's why we choose him, not because the movie is out, I think, two weeks ago. Um, but in all seriousness, most of the times when you present uh, AI stuff at customers, uh, some people have a real fear about what is AI? Does it take my job away? Is it secure enough right now? Is somebody in the military uh, somehow researching stuff that may be yeah, a little bit dubious or evil even? Um, but we're going to focus right now uh, on a more yeah broader range um, and Wikipedia has a smart definition about artificial intelligence basically uh, it says three things artificial intelligence is here for us to help us with reasoning understanding and interacting that's a pretty broad uh, spectrum what we're going to focus in our yeah in our day uh, full day workshop is basically uh, focusing on three main aspects from AI on the Microsoft stack vision speech and language as you can see on the right hand side there already are a couple of uh, capabilities within the microsoft stack uh, you probably already you are using uh, on a day-to-day -day basis um, and just to talk you through some examples um, in terms of vision 
Um, the most used AI feature uh, in Vision in the Microsoft world right now is probably Face ID and Windows Hello. So if you have a uh, hardware that is available uh, since I think three or four years even, um, that is capable of the Windows Hello sign-in, you just look at the camera, it recognizes you and logs you into your Active Directory account. That's already uh, a part of AI. And we read a study like a couple of weeks ago saying that this is probably the most used daily today uh, use case with uh, AI right now in the vision area. Um, another example would be document tagging and image tagging in SharePoint Online. So automated uh, yeah, extraction of metadata. You can do this also already in your OneDrive. Uh, try to upload some pictures and try to search for cat or dog. Make a picture of your pet at home and you will see no matter the name of the file name, it will recognize uh, the animal and will give you the answer back. So this is already working on OneDrive. Um, and a last thing, there's a cool app for your mobile phone, Seeing AI from Microsoft, you can use on your Android phone or in the iPhone. And it gives you the availability to uh, yeah, simply showcase what AI is capable right now. Um, you can take your phone, um, focus a text or an image, uh, and it will uh, give you the opportunity to see what AI is capable right now on your phone, powered with the computational power from the cloud. Um, in terms of uh, speech. Um, we have PowerPoint live captions. You probably know from the latest Microsoft presentence uh, stream auto transcript since I think two or three weeks available in eight languages, not only English and Spanish anymore, even for us, good in German already, then Siri and Katana and the whole translation thing. And in language understanding, uh, most probably you're familiar with the capability that the teams can auto translate uh, your messages. So you can point uh, to a text and say on the action menu on the right side of your Teams chat, translate, and it will translate whatever language you're using. It's just a text to text translate. Um, and it's really helpful if you, for example, work with colleagues that speak a totally different language and you have no understanding what they're meaning. It's maybe not so helpful if you're, let's say, speaking English or French and have the Latin background, but for a language you have no clue about, it's really, really helpful. Uh, another example is the sentiment detection that is uh, a part of the cognitive services where you basically uh, can use a text and the cloud tries to detect the sentiment of the message. Um, we use it for, for example, for a service desk, where you can automatically detect the sentiment of a request. Is it friendly? Are there any harsh words in there? So this would be also a good example. And the auto meeting minutes. So basically the capability to generate um, automatic meeting minutes from a Teams meeting, for example, because a bot is listening to it. Okay, um, we have only have our own mind to came up with uh, what we think of artificial intelligence. So it's a good idea to read up on it. And in his latest book, Stephen Hawking has a whole uh, chapter on artificial intelligence. And he defines that says, okay, at the moment, computers have the advantage of speed, but they show no sign of intelligence. He even does uh, quite a frank uh, comparison with a computer and says, okay, a computer is less complex than the brain of the Earth room right now. Um, but what computers have um, as an advantage is Moore's law. So basically every 18 months, uh, they are capable of doubling their computational power. So in his books, he says something like this, right at the moment, computers are as smart as earthworms, but in 200 to 300 years, his thinking was that computers will be uh, yeah, as powerful as our own brain. So right at the moment is Earthworms 1 and Terminator 0. And with that, I hand it over to Api. So, um, yeah, that's a, a, a nice introduction. Uh, hey, I'm no longer seeing your uh, screen. Can you present again? Oh, sorry, I thought it was over to uh, Api. Oh, yeah, he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just I'm, I'm presenting, but the slides will be uh, will be on my <laughs> side. So at the moment, when we talk about AI, we had a, a nice introduction. But the next thing that we're going to see is um, all the different services that there are in Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Azure or Microsoft 365. So one, two, three. Will all the slides pop up? There, we there are. they are. Yeah. So when we talk about Azure AI, we're going to see a, a nice visual in a few seconds where you'll see all the different services that are available. But first, 
when you think about what uh, Satya Nadella has been telling everyone, it's all about tech intensity. And when you think about tech intensity, it's all about making uh, different services available for everyone. So if you look at the uh, the things that are happening in Azure and in Azure AI, you'll see that it becomes easier to consume AI services in your own applications. And where we had to develop large complex systems, uh, let's say five years ago, nowadays you will see that you can turn on AI uh, infused solutions within, sex, within seconds. So if you look at Azure AI, you'll see that there are AI apps and agents where you think of Azure bots, bot services, where you can have conversational uh, actions, where you can have discussions, where you can actually talk to a system, where the system can re reply based on your actions. But you can also think about the cognitive services itself, where they can actually do things based on your behavior. Like Thomas was saying, you could say if something uh, or if someone is replying to you and the sentiment of the reply uh, seems to be an indication that the user is uh, upset, you could follow a different flow than whether or not he's uh, happy. And when you look at that, uh, that's only one of the one of the parts that Azure is actually investing in. Other things are knowledge mining, where cognitive search or large sets of data are being processed to actually provide insights based on things happening in your system. And that's all obviously linked to machine learning, where you have Azure Databricks, machine learning AI infrastructure. And one of the announcements that I did at the uh, at the Ignite that we had last week is Project Cortex. And Project Cortex is a service within Office 365 that uses all those different types of machine learning like image and text recognition and form processing and machine learning, but also machine uh, teaching to actually create something called a knowledge base. So what they do is they create knowledge entities based on your content and those knowledge entities will uh, roll up in a knowledge center or on a topic page so that you within your organization can just work on your content and a backend system will actually extract content from the content that you are generated and say, hey, this is trending content for you. And obviously you can manually curate that information. But uh, the cool part about this is that it can be uh, started with AI. So you get a, a head start by generating your content and making sure that people find the right content for you. And that's all being, uh, being powered by that Azure AI platform. So within the next slide, you will see that there are uh, quite a few different surfaces. So you've got conversational AI where we talk about the bot framework. There's trained surfaces where you have machine learning models pre-populated by Microsoft, and that's called the cognitive surfaces. And obviously you can create your own custom surfaces where you have to build your own machine learning model. And what we're gonna talk about today is mainly focused on the bot framework and the cognitive services. But as you can see, there are a whole lot of different AI tools and AI infrastructure that are available within that platform and that you will actually have to use if you start working with it. So there are, uh, well, quite a few new things when, whenever you start playing around with it. Lucky for us, most of those things are either well-documented or are very easily uh, available to start playing around with it, uh, depending on your scenario. So what we're going to show you in this um, in this in this webinar is mainly focused on the conversational AI. So within the next slide, we're going to uh, quickly walk you through on how a user would interact with a system, and that's actually what our first demo is going to be about. So Stefan, can you walk us through uh, how conversational AI would work? Yeah, sure. So um, mainly conversational AI is some kind of subfield of artificial intelligence. Uh, and the main goal of conversational AI is to produce like a, a seamless conversation between humans and computers. So imagine um, in the past, uh, it was all about um, connecting humans uh, with with uh, using tech to, to each other. So um, you had like your Facebook Messenger, and you would talk to another human being via that Facebook Messenger, and that thing um, slightly changes in the in the future. So it's about having conversations not only with human beings, but all, also with computers and with services. So um, you could see it as a new UI paradigm, if you will. 
Um, so you don't have to um, have that typical click and text approach anymore when, when integrate, interacting with some kind of service through a website or application or whatever. Um, it should be uh, more human-like. So um, exposing software as it is right now, but through a new um, interface, which is kind of conversational. So users should be able or people should be able to have a real conversation with that service by either the, the use of speech or written language or even um, pictures or videos or whatever. And of course, um, that enables us to, to have like a new software uh, uh, service exposed uh, through, through the, the use of applications, browsers, and what's kind of new right now, even on IoT devices. So um, for example, uh, think about your coffee machine, um, which in the future may have a bot built in. So whenever you wake up, basically you just tell the coffee machine, hey, coffee machine, um, I'm in five minutes ready, so I need an espresso there. Uh, and the coffee machine will actually um, tackle that input uh, and produces the coffee after five minutes. So you don't have to walk over to your coffee machine, you just have to say, hey, do this and that, and it will be um, doing that for you. And that's a kind of enhancement um, to have like, uh, services and processes you you've built up right now transfer transfer to a more human-like um, way of using it, and of course bots um, play an important role. So um, if you look at what, what Microsoft actually offers in terms of um, bots and building bots, it's quite a lot of uh, of services and tools you you get out there. So um, they have their own uh, framework which is called the Bot Framework SDK. Um, which is an open source framework for building bots. And the cool thing about it is um, it's not narrowed down to, to hardcore C Sharp or .NET development. Um, it's out there for JavaScript as well as uh, Java and Python in the preview mode. So you're not, uh, you're not stick to, to um, being a developer using C Sharp and .NET. If you're a web dev um, nowadays, um, you're most probably used to, to do uh, JavaScript or TypeScript or even Python and, uh, if you come from the data scientist um, world. And with those capabilities, you're right now able to build a bot based on the bot framework. On top of that, they offer a service um, within Azure called the Azure Bot Service, which is kind of your, your hosting environment for your bot. So uh, you don't have to take care about connecting your bot to the various channels and establishing the connection to the various channels like Facebook Messenger or Teams or Slack or whatever. That's done by Microsoft. So you just have to build your bot once uh, and then in the Azure portal say, okay, I want my bot to have been deployed for, for Teams. And of course, uh, uh, I have a customer facing bot which needs to be exposed through Facebook Messenger or through my uh, public facing website. And you just tick the box and it's uh, being available from that from those channels right, uh, right away. So you don't have to care about this whole connection establishment and stuff like that. Um, and the thing which actually uh, brings some, some kind of intelligence to your bot is called, as you mentioned before, API Cognitive Services. So Cognitive Services, um, we'll talk about that later on as well, but those are the, the services mainly exposed for APIs which deliver you some kind of intelligence. Um, on top of that, um, what Microsoft actually um, is doing right now, and they, they have announced some, some more capabilities last week at Ignite, which we'll see and cover in the tutorial as well, is they have come up with some solution accelerators, as they call it, some templates to give you a kind of starting point for, for your bot development. So if you're new into the topic and you don't know actually what's, what's available out there and what you actually can do, just pick one of the one of the solution accelerators or templates, which is basically a full-blown project, which you just have to to fill up with with some life, as I call it. So you just have to adapt the dialogues in there, adapt the, the language in there, but it's pretty pretty much um, ready to use right away. Um, and if you look at the at the Teams App Store, for example, nowadays um, they are pretty much um, divided into into two main app uh categories if you will so the one is apps which mainly uh consist of tabs and the other one is bots of course uh and so um whenever you you face a bot within teams within the app store i'm pretty sure it's built on top of the uh, on top of the microsoft bot framework but what are actually um bots um bots of course uh it's just nothing more than a computer program um, and it's designed to have like a conversation with another uh, human being 
um, and it should always solve the user's needs in the quickest and fastest way possible. So um, whenever you have a use case or you come up with a use case where you say, okay, I want to use a bot for that, first of all, validate the use case. Does it even make sense to introduce a bot in, instead of the, the current uh, implementation? Um, and the other, the other point you'll get when, when doing bots, of course, uh, it, it takes the fear for people somehow. So um, you could basically use a bot as a first step to introduce artificial intelligence into your company or organ organization in a more friendly way to take the fear out of people um, and, and tell them, hey, that uh, lightweight AI service, it will help you um, do your work. It, it won't um, actually do your work or replace you in a couple of days or weeks or whatever. Um, and so one of the first use cases we're facing um, right now, and this is one of the, of the things we'll do in the tutorial and we'll cover that uh, in more detail, is how to modernize a uh, company's FAQ. Um, you certainly will have some kind of knowledge silos distributed over your whole organization nowadays. So you have departmental knowledge, you may have company info, you have troubleshooting and support info. And those kind of informations are stored uh, within different systems. So departmental knowledge may be stored within SharePoint, company info may be stored on your public facing website and troubleshooting and support uh, info is may be stored uh, in a kind of ticketing system. And so the thing is, um, users actually before they could seek information they need to think about hey which kind of information am i looking for before they can actually go to the to the correct service or system to look the, the information up and so um, by introducing a bot for that specific use case you could tell your people hey we've we've uh, now implemented the bot which is reachable in teams and whenever you have a question you just uh, talk to the bot in teams you don't have to think about which kind of information am i seeking before because the bot actually will grab the, those knowledge silos within your company's uh, IT landscape anyways, uh, and will be able to, to kick uh, or to provide you with the correct answer. And if it's not uh, able to provide you with the correct answer, um, the bot could easily um, loop in a, another human being, an expert as we call it, uh, to answer the question uh, later on in, in a one-to-one -one chat between the, the expert and the, the, the end user who is seeking information. And so that's the, the first use case um, we, you could implement. And then, of course, what Microsoft's vision uh, actually is to have like a virtual assistant, as they call it, which, which um, mainly combines some cognitive uh, capabilities in there, like speech, Q&A, language understanding, for example. And this should be your brand. This should be your personality, should be aligned with your uh, company's personality. And that's based on the modern um, bot development stack. So you have the Azure bot service um, and the bot framework SDK, which offers you connection to various channels, not only Microsoft ones, but also third party ones. Um, you could implement various user input types. So it's not only about texting, it's also about maybe speech tapping, which uh, offers you the possibility to just tap buttons and get the conversation um, going faster onward. And of course, you can't, uh, you, you not only can deploy your bot to, um, to apps and websites, as I said, you could also deploy your bot to various devices, to your smartwatch, to your Amazon Alexa, um, Google Assistant, whatever. Uh, and on, uh, on the other hand, you have your bot connected to various knowledge silos. Um, could be uh, PDFs, uh, could be data sources like uh, SQL databases or what have you. Uh, and the, the, the cool thing about it is um, they have a concept called skills, which is basically um, aligned with, with this whole um, Amazon Alexa approach. You just build skills for your various use cases and you can plug and play your skills into your bot. So you just build the skill um, and it could be that one uh, IT department or one uh, business department builds one skill for their use case and another one builds another skill uh, and you just combine those skills within your bot. And of course, as is a Microsoft um, product or, or service, um, you have access to the various APIs uh, which Microsoft is offering. So you have access to the Office Graph. Um, you can integrate Azure AD with it. Uh, so you could do even authentication and authorization with it and, and secure the whole thing a bit. Um, and in terms of uh, bringing some kind of intelligence into it, um, we'll cover that in the tutorial in detail. 
but there are a lot of services out there which actually offer intelligence. So ranging from speech, you have speech to text, text to speech, even speech translation um, in terms of language. You, we talk about language understanding, of course, but we also talk about uh, translating language and, and analyzing language. Um, and you have various categories and areas um, which you can basically use and combine within your bot's use case in a meaningful way um, to even enrich your, your conversation or even uh, give users the possibility to, possibility to not only chat with your bot, but also uh, exchange pictures, for example, and the bot then will um, detect the, the uh, entities within that picture and analyze that picture and then set some actions based on that. So we'll cover that uh, in detail later on. Um, from the first step, of course, there are two main services which we'll use and we'll demo them um, uh, later on as well. First one is language understandings for, for detecting the intents and deriving meaning from the, from the inputs we get from, from uh, end users. And the second thing is uh, Q&A Maker, which is basically a uh, knowledge-based as a service, as I li I'd like to call it, um, where you could basically just um, build up knowledge bases, uh, create your Q&A pairs, uh, and have your bot um, being served from that knowledge basis um, without actually um, digging deeper into, okay, how do I structure data and, and things like that. It's just a lightweight service to use um, uh, to, to have like information stored somewhere which is accessible by the bot. And last thing um, we'd like to cover in the tutorial, and it's kind of of a teaser um, right now is um, what Microsoft announced uh, last week is a new tool called Bot Framer Composer, which actually gives you the possibility to um, develop bots without actually writing code. So you could have um, Composer used as a tool um, for actually do the whole development uh, life cycle, but you don't write code actually. That's done by Composer. So you just have to define your dialogues in there define the actions in there. Um, you can also uh, use Composer to uh, even build your language models and you can work with language generation in there and that's all uh, then translated into code by Composer. Uh, and at the end of the time, you just click a button and say um, deploy bot to Azure uh, and Composer will actually deploy the whole bot right into your Azure subscription without, as I said, writing a single line of code. So we'll cover that in the tutorial as well. To, to show off um, how to actually do modern um, bot development without actually writing code, because that's a thing right now. But hey, Tommy, what about um, demoing some stuff right now? Uh, I'm pretty sure the, the attendees uh, wanna have a sneak peek on what we are planning to do with the tutorial. Yeah, it looks like that you knew the slide deck. So next slide, of course, is demo. Um, we're gonna end PowerPoint right now. Click that down and there you all should see uh, my screen still showing with a nice communication side. Looking to Stefan, looks good. Um, what we created here is uh, yeah, a small communication site based on modern SharePoint. Um, and the idea is, of course, uh, to get your attention to various sessions at ESPC, so LoRa sessions or Hunt sessions, for example. Um, but today we're gonna focus on how can we integrate a, a bot, for example, into our SharePoint portal. Uh, and for that reason, down here, uh, we have this nice little window saying chat with a bot. Um, what we have here is the capability that I can say here, hi. After a little bit of waiting, the bot should greet me. Let's see if the demo got so with us. Or should I refresh? Looks like I should refresh. It's stuck on sending. It comes from preloading uh, the page like guess, half an hour ago. I guess we should have scaled it up for the webinar because um. I'm guessing we're using the free plans for demo purposes, um, which is not the, the best uh, way to do it. Um, no worries. Yeah, there it is. I think actually it's more a refresh because I opened the tab like half yeah. an hour ago. Okay. Could be. No matter the problem, uh, here you see Alfred is calling us and he's saying, hey, I'm um, your digital assistant and you are, I'm here to help you um, with questions around ESPC. Um, so actually, um, Stefan, I think I can ask about what are the costs for the conference, right? Yeah, sure. So um, you could basically ask him how much it costs to attend the ESPC this year. Yep. So the answer gets back. I have a link to the pricing page. You see on the bottom left, uh, we are referred to shepandeurope.com pricing. Uh, so I can define here question and answers and my people uh, can use this bot. Uh, also, 
we can make a pretty simple request in the SharePoint community doing like something a dear Vesa email uh, but please don't do this check out his sessions he has two sessions in the keynote and the best place uh, to ask some questions is right after the session uh, Vesa is always open to be approached after his sessions don't write any emails to him asking the questions there but how actually does this work that I can ask here questions to my bot in SharePoint uh, where are these questions coming from um, in our case, they're coming from a Q&A maker instance um, that we pre-configured for today's demo. So you see here uh, all our knowledge bases that are in the Q&A maker that is connected to our Azure tenant. Um, we have here our ESPC KB standing for ESPC knowledge base. If I click into that, it loads a couple of seconds and then it will show us all the questions that it's capable of uh, at first. Um, you see that there are quite a few questions. So there are 103 Q&A pairs already in our tenant. Um, that's because we are using a feature called the chit chat functionality. So Azure Portal is uh, providing us with, I think, a preset of four uh, different types. Correct, Stefan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, four uh, different even five. Sorry, even five. five. Okay, it's getting more and more even every week. It feels like. Yeah. Um, the idea is that uh, the chit chat uh, helps you with a, a starting small talk capability. So for example, you see here the different question, and they are all answered by I'm a bot, so I don't have an age. Like, do you have an age? Do you have a birthday? Are we the same age? All these possible questions your users probably will ask uh, at any time uh, during their usage. Um, but but we also did this, that we used uh, an Excel file actually, living in our uh, SharePoint site, where it extracted some uh, questions out of it. So what we did is that in our SharePoint portal here, under documents, let's open this here. We have a Q&A maker sample FAQ. And when I open this Excel file, you see uh, I have a nice, uh, simple, very simple Excel file with questions and answers. Uh, and Q&A maker is able to extract that information from these Excel files and use it in the Q&A maker as your knowledge base. Why is this a thing? Because if you think of your business users, it's very, very easy to say to some person, please provide the question in column A and provide the answers in column B, uh, instead of giving them access and showing them how to interact with the Q&A maker in the Azure portal, just point them to a specific Q&A Excel file and you can configure in here uh, the source uh, of your knowledge base and the Q&A maker then it tries to extract information uh, from this Excel file. It's not only uh, capable of extracting information of an Excel file, also Word documents uh, that can be structured with headings and paragraphs and the Q&A maker even goes one step further and creates like questions and multiple answers and multiple subchapters based on the hierarchy within your Word document. But um, let's try to add a question here as well. So we have prepared a simple question the bot shouldn't be able to answer right now. I just need to copy it from my simple cheat notepad over here. So we're going to ask the bot, when are the, what are sessions about from our dear friend Martin from the Netherlands? Um, and right now the bot has no clue. So it's saying, I'm not sure, but if you keep thinking about it, I bet you come up with a great answer. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, so Let's add the answer to our QA maker here. Again, I'm just pasting in my question and another prepared statement follows right now. So I'm entering some text to my Excel file now, make sure that it is saved, just close it. But right now still my bot didn't learn or my QA maker didn't learn anything new. But what I need to do is that I need to go into here. Um, and into settings. Oh, so. No, you're right. Settings. Settings, yeah. Set. Need to scroll up. I guess your browser is screwing me. Ah, here we are. Thank you. So, the important part here is that I need to click on refresh content because when I click on refresh content now, QA Maker reaches out to the Excel files and re tries to. Uh, read all the content from in there and after the refresh content click I need to click save and train so now basically the machine learning algorithm in the background uh, kicks in and uses the data uh, from uh, the Excel file the Excel file is also uh, a good way to 
news information that is stored in your SharePoint. So it's secured by Azure Active Directory. Um, the Dynamic is also capable of yeah, grabbing content from your public facing website from an FAQ, for example. But most of the content in our yeah, working in mind probably stored behind some kind of application. In our case, it's SharePoint, so we use this capability here. Um, after training, I need to publish the QA Maker because QA Maker basically is offering us this knowledge base as a service, and the bot just consumes this service uh, in the backend. Takes again a couple of seconds. And now I should be able to ask the bot uh, about Martin's questions. I'm going to refresh the page just to make sure that everything is loaded fresh. You're going down. I again start with a nice greeting. So the bot comes back. And then I ask about Martin's questions. And then oh, it man. says, okay, Martin has two sessions, Microsoft Teams architecture deep dive and Office 65 labels deep dive. So we updated even our bot now, learn something new. Um, and in the backend, what we created to make this possible is uh, we use the QA maker. And the QA maker, you see here after pressing publish, has a really, really cool feature. This little button here saying create bot. Um, you can create a QA maker also by just providing uh, question and answers inside of the web editor of the QA maker. But with clicking on create bot, Stefan, what happens then? Yeah, well, it actually happens is, uh, as it states, it will open your Azure portal and will um, go to the um, creation plate for creating a new bot and it pre fills all the, the attributes in there. So you don't have to insert the uh, QA maker um, endpoint keys um, and names and stuff like that. It's already pre filled. So you basically just hit, need to uh, hit create. And what then actually uh, the Azure portal does is to create a new Azure resource called a web app bot. Um, and it will deploy um, the whole code for uh, connecting your bot to the various channels in there, as well as connecting your bot to Q&A Maker. So you don't have to write a single line of code. And what you'll basically get is a fully functional bot, which actually uh, is capable of talking to your end users and grabbing information from your Q&A Maker knowledge bases, um, which you actually update. Yep, so what we're seeing here is our uh, Azure instance of the demo uh, Q&A bot for ESPC we created earlier today. So this was actually created by clicking the button by Stefan. You see here the settings. Um, you can also go in here and test the WebJet uh, compatibilities inside of the Azure portal. So you see here, when I start here a conversation, it greets me already, uh, in our case, with the keynote speakers for ASPC 19, and I can get a feeling of how the bot uh, is operating. This is a a great way uh, if you think of a bot that is maybe exposed also as a team spot, which we'll show you in a couple of minutes, and you don't want to ask the bot in Teams all the time. Uh, if the bot is working also just in the web chat here in, in uh, the Azure Blade. Um, speaking of Teams, um, what we also created is that we uh, connected the channel for Microsoft Teams. So it enables us to also communicate with the bot in Teams. So instead of only using here our SPFX web, but which is by the way, open source. So you can go to the PNP GitHub repository right now. I think Stefan pushed the PR a couple of weeks ago. It's available for you to just use this uh, web part with your own bot. The only thing that you need to configure is that you need the direct line secret from the dialect brand channel configure your web pod with that and you're good to go. And the other example would be connect your bot to the Microsoft Teams channel. And with that, you get the capability uh, inside of Teams. Um, I have here an ESPC webinar bot. I already tried it a couple of times earlier today. So let's see again when I say hi. So it reads me again um, and I can again ask about Martin's sessions. And also here, I get the answer back. Um, if you start uh, working with a bot uh, in Microsoft Teams, the first thing you normally do is that you go to Azure and grab this application, uh, Microsoft application ID from your bot instance uh, and try to search for it. So as you see, uh, I already searched for a couple of IDs. Let me make sure I'm searching for the right one. And the normal thing that happens is when I search for something, 
I get no result. And that's kind of confusing, but what actually is the case is that you search for people. So you see here, I need to switch to people and then it recognizes my bot. But what we created is even uh, one step further, uh, we created a Teams application for our bot. So you see here in my left rail in Teams under the ellipsis, I have multiple uh, Teams applications and one is our ESPC webinar bot. Uh, how did we do that? We opened the Microsoft Teams App Studio and created a manifest for our bot. Um, to not bore you with all the details going through the creation, I'll just show you uh, the edit form. Um, so we provided some basic information uh, about our bot, about our Teams application, and that's actually also a thing uh, we're gonna showcase you in our webinar in Prague for our whole day uh, webinar on the AI fundamentals. We make sure that you walk out with a working bot that is also connected to your Teams uh, environment so you can show off the next day or the, the week after uh, ESPC at the office and show what cool Q&A bot you are capable of building. Um, to do that, as I said, we provide some details for our bot here, some short name, long name, uh, and generate uh, application ID. And the important part here, uh, we use certain capabilities with our Teams application. In our case, we use a bot. So I already connected uh, our ESPC webinar bot uh, just by clicking on connect existing bot. If there is none configured, it will ask me, do you want to create a new one or will you use an existing one? I clicked on existing one, provided my app ID and it recognized already the bot because it knows uh, uh, it needs to ask the Azure portal about this uh, specific unique uh, identifier and then it gets back the connection uh, through the Teams channel and we are able uh, to connect our Teams application with the bot instance. Uh, if I provide all the needed information, I can click on test and distribute, and then I have three options here. I can sideload install my application directly into my Teams client. For that, uh, a certain tenant configuration needs to be set on the tenant level. Uh, an admin needs to allow you to sideload applications inside of Microsoft Teams. The other option actually is to download the package because when you download the package, you can again then make the following, you can go to your app store and upload a custom app. And when you upload a custom app, you're adding to your own app catalog, uh, also the capability of providing your own application. So you see here, this is our test uh, environment. We have some, again, some Arnie bots, some Terminator stuff here uh, running and some test uh, web parts from our colleagues. But instead of only being able to add all the public available uh, applications, uh, we are also able to use our own only um, scoped to our company environment. And one of this is this ESPC webinar bot. With this uh, capability, Stefan, for example, would also be able to open up our test tenant and also start talking uh, with the ESPC webinar bot right now. All right. We Stefan, leave a couple of questions open, I guess. So tutorial attendees uh, will get a more detailed look on it and will um, actually um, be walk, being walked through the whole process of creating the knowledge base, creating the bot, creating the Teams app. So we need to, so, to leave Tom, some open questions, I guess. So real quick question. Can you quickly walk us through the SharePoint Framework web part? Because that's not a out of the box thing. That's something you actually have to install and then get bigger. So what do I actually have to do to configure that? Okay, uh, I'm gonna open up the edit mode of our my page here. And I'm gonna edit the web part. So what you need to do at first is go to PNP and grab the web part from the PNP GitHub repo. Uh, and then you need to upload the package um, to your app catalog. So this web part actually comes available to you inside of your web part options here so that you can click somewhere and say, okay, create new app part. You need, of course, to provide this web part. But with that, um, you're seeing here the bot framework chat version four web part, um, Stefan created. Um, and what you need to do is that you need to provide the direct line secret of your bot here in the configuration uh, wizard. And then everything else basically uh, is around uh, UI. So I can define the color of the web chat, the message web chat. So you see here, uh, we already used some kind of, of blue to tag along uh, with the UI of the European uh, SharePoint conference, um, but you can do that as well. So the idea of the web is that you just need to provide the diagram secret 
And with that, uh, you're good to go uh, in terms of communication with your bot. And also you can provide some kinds of, of your own colors. Cool, cool. All right. Any other questions? Do you have any questions in the chat? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, anybody that is interested in asking a question, now is the time to do it. Uh, we have a few questions in, guys, so will I just shout them out? Yep. Yeah. Okay, sure. great. So first question is, um, would it be possible to build a bot by myself as an attendee to take home, which we will build in the full day tutorial? Yeah, sure. So that's what we actually mentioned. So um, attendees uh, of the tutorial will actually um, get the chance to follow us along on stage um, and build their, their uh, actual bot um, by themselves. So um, they basically can follow us along um, and build their own bots if they want to. OK, uh, next question. How does a custom bot and power virtual agents work together? So Power virtual agents were something that has been announced at the, at the Ignite, and they're mainly focused at Dynamic 365. What we will walk you through is the, uh, the bot builder that uh, Stefan already uh, showed you. So we'll do a sneak peek of that. Uh, we won't be focusing on the Dynamics part of things, but obviously once you have a chatbot that can uh, well, handle your conversation flow. Obviously, you can retrieve data from Dynamics 365 or any other data source that you would like. So I think we also have a scenario where we query office.com. So if you have a question on how to do specific things within Office 365, you could query the existing knowledge base on office on office.com so that you could provide them with an answer saying, hey, you can find more info on your question on office.com, uh, explaining basically how to use the out-of-the-box services within Office 365. Okay. Um, are bots not just if, else, then, that systems? Yeah, well, basically, um, you could compare it to an if, else, then system if you're building a real, real um, low basic approach bot. So, um, as I said, it's just a web app. So, you don't have to use any of the uh, cognitive services which provide actually intelligence. And then it would be an if, else, then. Um, system, but if you make use of the of the cognitive services we mentioned, um, you get rid of that. So you basically don't have to write um, thousands of if, if and else statements, but you basically um, use those cognitive services to to uh, derive the meaning and and uh, get some kind of intelligence into your bot, and that would actually uh, makes the the whole um, bot thing uh, different from from a normal web app. Um, because it has some kind of uh, intelligent capabilities in there. Okay. Uh, what are the limits, or better, what about performance once the Excel list reaches a few thousand rows? Um, yeah, uh, the thing is that the, the Excel uh, spreadsheet idea is just an, an intro, um, because what you actually can do is that uh, you have some limits in terms of uh, what your knowledge maker is able to store. It's most of the time a, a pricing thing because the knowledge maker stores the information in Azure. And as we all know, Azure pricing is always based on some measurement. In this case, it's basically storage. Um, but what we already did for our customers is that we not only the purpose of uh, growing and sizing, but more in the purpose of separating data, created more knowledge phases, let's say, 10 or 12 knowledge bases, and one bot reaches out to multiple knowledge bases. So basically, you can tag along uh, a couple of sets of knowledge bases and then make one bot that um, uh, yeah, reaches out to the different knowledge bases. And based on language understanding, it uh, detects the different uh, entities and then gets one step further. Stephanie, you want to add something? Because you're looking so. Uh, it's happening with your, Microsoft, with your microphone, I guess, because it sounds kind of weird, uh, at least on my end. Okay. Didn't change my setup. It, it sounded a bit weird on my side as well, but 
basically you're saying that while there are limits, uh, limits are pretty much uh, related to what you can do in Azure. And obviously, if you're using Excel, then there are other limits than if you're using just the Q&A maker, but everything is stored in, in Azure. So when you think of it, you can do Cosmos DB to store answers and questions as well. So then uh, limits are, well, kind of kind of gone away. Yeah, that's actually true. Okay. Uh, do you have to enter exactly the questions which the bot should react to? That's actually a pretty good question. So um, in the demo we showed you, we make just use of Q&A Maker. And Q&A Maker is, a, as I said, rather lightweight service in terms of providing intelligence. So um, what Q&A Maker actually does is to, it detects certain patterns within your um, within your input questions. So um, you could think of it as a pattern matching machine. So you don't have to exactly input the exact same um, question which is stored in the in the knowledge base, um, but it is not capable of, of derive the meaning or the intent from the input. So if you have a question like in this case, um, uh, what's Tommy showing, hey, what is Martin's ESPC session about? And if you would then ask, um, could you please tell me what Mr. Eccles uh, is talking uh, about at this year's uh, SharePoint uh, uh, Office 365 and Azure conference? You most probably wouldn't get the correct answer. Um, so you would need to have some kind of language understanding service uh, in front of Q&A Maker to, to actually um, derive the meaning and derive the intents from the inputs uh, and then forward them to, to the knowledge base and, and then um, get the correct answers from that. Brilliant, brilliant. Guys, thank you so much uh, today. And on behalf of the ESPC community, thank you for taking the time today to complete this webinar. We really appreciate it. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Yes. Soon in Prague. Yeah, Prague. Thanks. See you, See you soon. See you in about two weeks, <laughs> which will yeah, be great. Looking forward. Looking cool. forward to it too. And uh, yeah, it's uh, for anyone that hasn't cameras on the fence about coming, what would you say to them, Stefan? Um, for, from my perspective, it's uh, the, the coolest conference in terms of not only SharePoint, but it combines uh, Office 365 and Azure as well. So if you're in, in into the cloud uh, sphere nowadays and you work with Microsoft Cloud Technologies quite often, this is the conference to go to because you actually have the chance to not only get some SharePoint folks in there, but you get the whole Azure sphere as well. And that's a kind of cool uh, possibility to have that in one shot. Great. Thomas, what would you say? Um, yeah, I would have said the same if not Stefan would have taken along as the first answer. Um, no, for me, it's the, the a special thing because when you think of all the different Microsoft speakers that are present in Prague, not only for SharePoint with Jeff Tiefler, but also with Scott Hanselman, um, this is really a great, great opportunity to listen to the yeah, top level of Microsoft corporate employees and how they uh, formulate their messaging and what they think of uh, are the current things of in our, in our spectrum and our technology. That's a great chance to listen to some great guys. Great. And Albert, I leave the last word to you. Well, obviously, as it is just this close to the Ignite, you're going to hear all the cool announcements at the Ignite and see the the cool demo. So if you haven't attended Ignite, make sure to attend ESPC because it will help you well get inspired about all the cool new stuff. Brilliant. Albert, Stefan, Thomas, thank you so much for your time today. OK, everybody, this is the end of today's webinar. Don't forget our team's discount, uh, which is on offer where you can book four tickets and received your fifth ticket free. That's a huge 20% discount worth up to 1,795 euro for a huge amount of team learning and development. Uh, don't forget to check out all further upcoming webinars at sharepointeurope.com. Join us for our next webinar, which is happening uh, on Thursday, November 21st with Mike Fitzmaurice. And don't forget to check out our resource center where all our previous episodes are added. Now, thank you all for attending today's webinar. And again, a big thank you to Albert, Stefan, and Thomas. Take care and goodbye.